Here's a transshipment problem. Uh, Hoyt Computers recently decided to make a special 20th anniversary limited edition gaming laptop. Hoyt Computers have three factories located at Nashville, Toledo, and Jackson. These are the factories. And then the laptops are first sent to two warehouses at Springfield and Frankfort. And from these two cities, uh, they're sent to Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, Houston, and Phoenix and they have their demand and apparently uh, it says that these are pre-ordered so the customers already paid for the laptop and they're just, they're just waiting for these to arrive. Now uh, what the company is trying to do is because they already have the money they really need to minimize the cost to deliver these laptops. So they wrote down the transportation cost per laptop for each route. So uh, Nashville to Springfield would cost five dollars per laptop and so and so on okay and uh, given these numbers and given that uh, the supply is uh, 500 350 and 450 these are the number of laptops being manufactured in these three factories and then uh, they have to be sent over to each of these cities uh, in by this much number okay and uh, we need to first check whether the supply meets the demand because uh, if there's not enough supply for the demand then you need to add some dummy variables here uh, let's see if you add these to that's 800 plus 500 that's 1300 in all let's see if we add these two that's uh, 450 450 plus 250 gives you 700 plus 300 that's 1000 uh, 1300 okay so we do have supply equal to demand 1300 each in that case we don't have to add any dummy origin or anything so that's good okay so uh, what I want to show you here is how to solve this question using an Excel spreadsheet so uh, let's go to Excel and here is uh, the exact same table now copied over here and uh, using these I need to uh, solve uh, the best plan okay so uh, which factory should send to which warehouse and which warehouse should go to uh, send to which cities okay alright so let's try to solve this um, now we have uh, first the cost function so what you want to do is you want to copy this entire thing and place somewhere let's say here okay so these are just exactly copied as you see over here but then uh, I want to delete these numbers and what these numbers will stand for before these were cost right these are the cost but now the the numbers that you have here will be the number of laptops being transported so uh, let's just fill in the numbers hypothetically and let's just uh, delete these fill in the numbers hypothetically let's just put 100 here 100 there uh, 100 here 100 there uh, maybe 150 here and uh, 140 here Okay, so uh, if Nashville sent 100 to Springfield and Nashville sent to 100 to Frankfurt, then how many did they manufacture? Well, 100 plus 100 will be their supply, right? And what you want to fill in is by using the summation function, so auto sum, right? So you click the auto sum so that this becomes 200. And then if you drag this right corner down, then you have these supplies, right? okay uh, now then uh, from Springfield to to Chicago you should send something so let's just say 50 is sent to here uh, 20 is sent to here 30 is just I'm just making up numbers uh, just some some small numbers here uh, Frankfurt just 20 and you can actually just put zero there if you if you don't want to think about numbers zero is fine okay uh, but having these numbers can 
make you be aware of whether you're uh, writing these auto sums correctly or not. So I put auto sum here, so these are added. And this is actually the total number of laptops that Chicago is receiving. So that's actually uh, something that you want to put here, okay? So you have this. And then um, the important thing is, uh, so, so I guess really everything begins now, really. So you, you have to write down the cost, which you want to minimize, right? And the cost is calculated by multiplying 5 times 100 plus 7 times 100, 3 times 100, 4 times 100, 7 times 150, 3 times 140. So you multiply everything and then you have to add them, right? And uh, Excel fortunately has a convenient formula for uh, multiplying first and then adding. So that's called sum product. Oops, okay. Sum product. Let's click this one. So sum product, right? Uh, the sum product, you should uh, write down what should be multiplied by what. And I want to multiply this one, comma, with this one, right? So you close. And then that's not all because now we also have these, right? And then you have, oh, not another sum product. Okay, so you need to put another sum product. Click this. Okay, and then I want to choose this, and then let me go way, way down, and then I need to choose this, okay? So those are, again, some product, and right now it says 5,565 is the total transportation cost, okay? All right, so once you have made the cost function and you made these values which stands for the number of laptops being transported then you want to solve by using the solver so you have to go to the data and there should be this solver if you don't have that then let's see uh yeah i have this load the solver add in in excel so just google this page and see what this says okay uh, there should be a way to install the solver Okay, so uh, assuming that you do have the solver, I'm going to click the sol solver. And we first have to set the objective. So the objective is to minimize this cost function. So I clicked it, and then I want to minimize it. So you make sure that you put the minimum. And by changing variable cells, and uh, you want to change the number of items being sent from uh, Nashville to Springfield and all that right so that's uh, one of them uh, but then there's also these where you need to change also right so I put that as well so these are the number of items being transported in each way each route and then then uh, by doing this we want to find the maximum no, no, the, the optimum solution, okay, which minimizes the cost, okay. All right, now let's think about the constraints. So there are three types of constraints. One is that the factories have their limitations to how much they can, they can make, right? So if we go up here, we see that, oops, oh, we have to add, okay. So to go up here, uh, we see that the, Nashville, Toledo, and Jackson, they are limited in the supply. They can't make more than these laptops, okay? So uh, we have to make sure that the, the ones that are going out from Nashville to Springfield and Frankfurt, this, this supply here, this should be less or equals to 500. Also, this should be less or equal to 350, and 290 should be less or equal to 450 because uh, they cannot provide more than uh, their maximum capacity, right? So I'm going to say that these three should be less or equal to the constraint, which is this one, okay? So we add that. And the next one is uh, the, there's another thing that you have to figure out, which is uh, 
the number of items that the Springfield receives has to be equal to the number of items that Springfield gives out, right? Okay, so for that, uh, we need to make a new row. So let me cancel this. I'm going to close this for now, and I'm going to add a new row. And these rows will actually keep track of the sum of the items that Springfield received. So we see that Springfield, in this case, it received a total of 350. And then Frankfurt, let's move this over here. So Frankfurt received 340. And then uh, these will be the, if you add it like this, then this will be the sum of total things that's shipped out of Springfield, right? And uh, if we add them, we get 225. And well, that's not good. Uh, but still, uh, we, we add them. And the reason I said that's not good is because uh, Springfield and Frankfurt are warehouses. And for warehouses, we assume that it does not store things. It will send out everything they receive. So this number should be equal to this number, okay? And this number should be equal to this number. Uh, now, you don't have to change this. Uh, the solver automatically do it for you. So let, let's go back to the solver and add this. So data and then solver. Let's add the fact that these two numbers should be equal to these two numbers. Okay, so we want these to be equal to this. And then uh, add that. And then finally, the uh, if you go up here, the demand also has to be met, right? So the demand, uh, so the actual numbers that the Chicago received, New York receives, Los Angeles and Houston, these numbers here should match, should be equal to the constra constraint above. They have to be equal so that every city will receive exactly the pre-ordered the amount and all the customers are happy. Uh, if, it, if they're not equal, then the customers are not happy, so it's bad, okay? So once you are at the last constraint, then you click OK, and then uh, you have to make sure you click this one, make unconstrained variables non-negative. And then once you click Solve, then the moment you sol click Solve, then it will be trying to solve to find out the, the right numbers to fill in here. So let's click solve. And I, I actually don't like GRG nonlinear. It seems to produce some decimal numbers. So I just like simplex LP. So that's just up to you. You, you can choose anything, but I, I'll choose simplex LP. Uh, and then you click solve. And already it's solved. And then I click OK. And here is the answer. Okay. So the answer says that uh, a whole lot of items should be sent to uh, Springfield more than Frankfurt, right? And uh, so they ship this much. And then Springfield should be sending to Chicago, Los Angeles, and Phoenix, whereas Frankfurt should be sending to New York and Houston. Okay, so that's how you solve using the Excel solver.